it's alive, it's alive, yippee! Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever the pick in time it is. Yes, this is my Hallmark intro, I'm sticking to it. Hello! <laughs> And welcome to this Toon Kind FPS, my fine audience. I am your humble view out, and I am joined by two incredible co-people today. Absolutely fantastic, wonderful beans, who are also in a great storyline that we are loving to be in, thanks to Winona. I wave at Winona in the chat. But I am joined by two fabulous beans with their incredible characters. Wonderful people of amazing talents who have thrown me for the ride in twists and turns along the way. Can they introduce themselves, please, my lovely people? So Gosh. that was. Uh, <laughs> I can't even form words right now. <laughs> Player number two, take the lead. <laughs> I suppose I'm a little bit more used to it, aren't I? <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Wiz. <laughs> I'm playing cheerfully today. <laughs> oh gosh, what a way to start the day. <laughs> Hi, I'm Candlestick, Hi. and I'm I'm gonna be playing Dr. Crystal Everlight. I have no regrets in my life ever. <laughs> you shouldn't. And I am also I am playing the humble monkey, and the monkey's home. And we shall see how things go as we go along, because <laughs> uh, as the name implies, Ari about that blood. <laughs> Lynn went, hey, you guys want some blood? And then they sent an actual letter, you know, saying, hey, check out this blood. And now we have the response. <laughs> yes. um, about that blood. <laughs> Lynn, what kind of blood do you send to these people? Lynn, Lynn, please. <laughs> it was literally a moment of... Literally a moment of like, ah, oh, this is not going to, like, this is like too important to be sent back in a letter. We're going to need to go in person. Which means, which means, the you shit. know what? It means we have to try and not get lost in Halloween Town again. Because <laughs> <laughs> the last time, Jeffrey and Crystal, we, we got lost. And the time after that, when Crystal went by herself, she was lost in Halloween Town for four hours. <laughs> All right, let's let's do, do that, we, shall we? <laughs> what I ask? Do you guys send any forewarning? Uh, I'm gonna roll for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> uh, yes, that is a 14 on the dice, and there's, I haven't looked at her modifier, which, if it's intelligence, is probably high. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, plus five. That's a 19. She sent a letter ahead. Okay, good. Because Lynn looked at that and went, I'm going to light the beacon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. At, at the estimated time of their arrival, there's going to be a beacon going up. Whether that will help them or not remains <laughs> to be seen. Shall we see? <laughs> let's, let's see how we do. Well, Jeff, that's about as what I expected. <laughs> yeah. What's your survival? Uh, oh, it doesn't suck. Still in your nine. Oh my god. <laughs> Whoop, I've got nines! <laughs> well. <laughs> you know, I, I like to think that Lynn's just kind of sitting in her office thinks about it a little hard and goes, eh, Kara needs the enrichment anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be able to stop everything her. In I <laughs> so I may as well just let it happen. Everything in Iron Call is going to shit. If she goes out there, she's just going to get caught up in this. So she's just doing what she does when Craigery gets lost. It's fine. He'll be spat out to me eventually. I'm going to go and read a book. <laughs> I feel like Nine is not like that low below 10 so I feel like Kara has fun for a little bit but eventually like has sympathy and leads them in the right direction <laughs> like maybe it's only an hour that they're lost or something like that yeah <laughs> especially as Network is just there with her little beacon going shiny person and cold person come please yes okay 
and it's just waiting. It's just waiting until Kara's done because she wants them. So it's it's kind of like the little kid who sits on the step watching someone play with the toys because she knows she's going to get them eventually. Mm. Uh, I feel like it's not even Crystal and Chifley that it, that's the persuasion. It's it's Network being like, I want to play with these people too. <laughs> <laughs> She's been very patient and waiting her turn. They are a very polite house. <laughs> but yeah, eventually you're going to get spat out at the building. This will never not be funny. <laughs> we love a good junior How? circus in this house. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Including this house. Including this house. Um, we'll get no, there eventually. I... <laughs> yeah, how how are these two doing? How are these two doing when they finally, finally rock up to the goddamn door? Um, well, they've not been running, so they've been going at a like nice chill pace. So Chip's fine. Yeah. The tips of his hair yeah. might be a little bit more. Yeah, it's it's always going to be that funny, isn't it? <laughs> um, uh, the tips of his hair might be a little bit more white than his uh default because he's just like, oh, it's taken so long. Why are we lost again? Ah. But um, apart from that, he's fine. <laughs> Genuinely. Crystal, oh, Crystal is resigned to her fate. She now knows that the town is a genus loci, and it's not her fault for being lost. So she's under, she's uh, of the mindset of, we're going to get there when we get there, and there's not really much we can do otherwise. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I just had the thought. Network's had a redesign mm -hmm. since the last time they were here, I believe. Since the last time Chifley was here, not the last time since Crystal. Oh, okay. That is a well, reason why Crystal got lost. <laughs> okay, well that's good. Because Chif's going to look at this building and be like, what? And he'll look at Chris, he's not going to say anything. He's just looking at going, this is... No, actually, no, he will say something. This is not the same building. Yeah, welcome to the wonders of a genus loci house. Um, they can change. I uh, didn't know that. We uh, we learn new things every day, apparently. Yes, well, I s suppose it's a. Uh, Good thing to learn with someone else uh, who's more experienced with it. Um, goodness knows I knew that, and it still took me a long time to find it last time because I was not expecting it. So count yourself lucky, I suppose. I will take that under advisement. Thank you. Shall we? All right. Um, hello, network. <laughs> she she's saying it like as if she's like reached to the door kind of thing because she knows that network can hear them even if I don't think she can tell network speak and no only two people who are you know not genius loci can understand network speech and alas you are not those two people yeah yeah I knew that I more meant uh, I don't even know if she can tell that network is speaking kind of thing Oh, there, there is a vague hum from the building. It's almost as though, as you guys were talking, there was just a vague hum, and then it's just you guys carried on talking, so Network was like, okay. <laughs> Surely Network is used to this by now. She is, and yet she still tries. Aww. Bless. <laughs> Love Network so much. <laughs> I love her. She's one of, she is the second character I made, and I treasure her. She is but, wonderful. Mm -hmm. But you get to the door. You guys have business cards, right? Pretty um, sure. Didn't they get them yeah. from Lynn a little bit ago? When they all yeah. came over for afternoon tea, did they get them? If they didn't, yes, they did. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Crystal has one from Rye from much earlier on Um, anyway. Mm -hmm, so. mm -hmm. Yeah, Rye yeah, definitely gave yeah. Crystal one. Yes, because we have two types of business card. It's a fun little failsafe. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
I'm ruling it as by now, specific, specifically Crystal, because Crystal is someone that Lynn has now gone, yeah, okay, I, I trust this one. I trust this one to the extent of this can go well. And so you definitely have a proper business card. So as you come to the door, you go to knock and the door just opens. <laughs> okay, I think that catches her off guard. Like, like she's not, uh, like, it takes her a couple of moments of, um, what? And then, like, uh, I think that she hasn't put together it's the business card and it's just, like, like, it's just gonna think network? Like, does, and, and like, uh, thank you, network. Does Lynn know we're he here? And the door just kind of swings open a little bit more in that kind of ushering gesture of, I opened it, come in. <laughs> I see nothing wrong with this. <laughs> oh my god. Especially, as, oh, god. oh god, it's Crystal. <laughs> yep, I'm not rolling anything. <laughs> Okay, I have to. I have to roll a network impulse control network. Are, are we, you going are we, to be? Are we doing strength saves? Am I doing one for Chifley? Yes, and also I. I gesture at it. Oh, that's a two. <laughs> so, oh, that's surprising, Chif. Okay. There is this beautiful, beautiful moment where, for five seconds, network is in professional mode. And then Crystal goes past the little, you know, the little torches by the door. <laughs> and Network remembers, oh, oh, shiny! Crystal's so shiny! And, uh, yeah, no. You're, you're both brought into it, especially as Chifley. You're still Chifley so cold. You need to be warmed. Don't worry. <laughs> you're back. Strength safe. Strength safe. I am yep. utterly gobsmacked. <laughs> this. <laughs> oh my god, they've got the same strength model. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love oh. it so much. Low strength so, characters are really funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, that's a 15 for Chifley and a 10 for Crystal. Crystal, you're airborne. Chifley, you have been ushered in. You are. Your feet are off the ground, but with a little kicky, you can just about touch the floor so you're not going, you know, bonanza. <laughs> Crystal, I'm sorry, honey. Uh, she should I'm have sorry. expected this, actually. Honestly, she should have expected this. Oh, but I just rolled for her to remember something. So, um, and I had had this, like, sort of in the back of my mind. I'm really happy that I could, um, I can sort of use it as the, she's going to call out to Network. Network, I brought a gift for you. If you put me down, I can give it to you. <laughs> Crystal, you are being dropped. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> 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 you say gift and you stop. It is the wind just cuts. Oh, thank goodness she did alright on her deck save. <laughs> oh, network. <laughs> oh, network. Oh, God. So, yeah, yeah, she, she, um, um, she does manage to catch herself. I, I don't think she was expecting to be dropped, but I, I guess then she was also pre uh, prepared for the possibility. Uh, so she does There's, manage to is, land okay. There is a pillow put under you because network is health and safety. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, then, yeah, she's going to dig into her hammer space to get it out. Hold on. Yep. Um, she digs it in into her hammer space, and um, she'll go. This is uh, actually a gift from uh, Cassie, uh, who wanted me to pass it along, and she's gonna pull out a um, a wind chime. <laughs> and all that is going to get tornadoed. <laughs> I have You're no standing idea. <laughs> Oops, sorry. You are standing in a wind funnel. Congratulations. 
I, I don't know what sort of wind chime it is. I think you can uh you can pick that. We'd be wild. Uh but this is from um Cassie and Marigold going shopping at the markets. Aww. Bless. I love that. <laughs> as as poor Crystal is being wind funnel tormented chiefly, would you like to roll perception? Sure, we can roll perception. Why not? Oh. Um. Oh, no, that's persuasion, not perception. That one is perception. It's less good. Oh, it's a 12. It's above average. Hmm. I think with a 12, you're in the foyer at the moment with everything happening. Dear gods. <laughs> oh, God. Sorry. You are thankfully a bit off to one side. <laughs> I think you do get out of the corner of your eye that above you, there is just this flicker of person shaped gold. Oh yeah, he'll look up. He will absolutely yeah. look up. There is so the house has got a open view zone above it, which kind of just lead shows into the client room and the foyer. So, Chifley, you can see Lynn, just hat on, cane in hand, just staring down at you guys. Judging Just us from watching. over the balcony. <laughs> from over <Yes>. the mezzanine. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Not saying anything. Just watching. Welcome to the show. <laughs> yes. Like full on the hands on the cane and everything. Chifley will just sort of look up at her and then smile a little awkwardly and, and give a little wave. Hello, detective. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Ford. Good to see you again. Network? Mm. Yes, it's a marvellous gift. Shall we get down to business? <laughs> and, Crystal, you're finally the wind tunnel ceases. The the wonderful wind chime has been plucked from your hand at some point during this absolute blitzing. <laughs> and then there is this, that warm breeze just kind of funnels through the house and seems to tornado up past Lynn. Her braid just moves in the wind and she just holds her hat for a second and then it's just dispersed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just the... Okay, yeah. Probably should have seen that coming, but at least now Network has something to, uh, something new to distract her with while Crystal is here this time. <laughs> there is jingling in the walls. <laughs> <sighs> That's going to keep them up at night. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry for anyone who is noise sensitive in this house. Good Listen, that, this that house is in a different building now. <laughs> Listen, this this house had the happy birthday box that played happy birthday every time you opened it and network got a hold of it. <laughs> <laughs> the um, amount of things that can obviously play in these walls. I think that birthday box did actually get used to torment Mac and Turpin. <laughs> But before we get distracted, Lynn just kind of shakes her head and just goes, Pleasure to see you both, although I wish it were on better business. To my office? Right, that sounds, that sounds good. <clears throat> Very also, good, Dr. Everlight. I'll see you. Hello, hmm? Detective. Hello, Dr. Everlight. I hope you're well. Ah. Uh, about as well as I can be, given everything going on. You? Eh. Yeah. Sim hat. 
Anyway, I'll meet you in there, right through the client room, all right? And then she just kind of walks away from you guys, not to the steps, not like, not to the staircases either side, just walks away from you guys, <laughs> out of sight. Yeah, she's going to jump off the mezzanine on the other side. <laughs> I know that. That or network, <laughs> that or network spirit do some shit, because network can now manipulate her flaws even better. <laughs> <laughs> she's a big girl now. Aww. She, she is. She's been learning she from is a Ashling. She's been learning from Ashling. She's been learning from Kara. She is having a grand old time. She is eating people. Splendid. <laughs> 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 but but you guys are allowed to just the foyer double doors just open up into the client room, and then the client room door. There's Lynn's office with its own double doors, and as you walk through. They do open just, like, right as you get there. And Lynn is already in her chair. Like, it's the... As you guys come in, it turns from facing away from you all to face you guys. Jeff is just going to sort of put, a, put a, a hand on his chin and he's just going to go, Are you a bard by chance, detective? Ah, uh, I'm easy to read in that regard, it seems. I have a touch for the dramatic. <laughs> I spent my most of my life around bards. You pick up a thing or two in, in that regard. Ah, uh, the wonderful debonair flair. <laughs> Fabulous. I, I hope to pick that, up yeah. It's pick and fantastic is what it is. Huh. Well, but you might like the score then. Be interested in learning more about that. But I guess time and place. It's, give me one second. And she kind of does this hand gesture in the air. You have a bard background. Does Crystal have any theatre background? Um, I gesture at her family who are both bards. Yeah, indeed. It's, so it is a sim, it's the gesture she does is one that you would both know because it is a quiet on set movement. And then she ends it by clenching the fist in the way that people normally do in the military in the hold. And as she does that, the doors behind you to her office close and everything gets a slightly muffled quality to it, just around you. She just goes, All right, we can speak freely. What you got for me? Crystal been like, like watching that, like, that's a neat trick kind of thing. But then with the, like, what have you got for me? And just like, right, serious mode. And then just like pinches the bridge of her nose with a sigh because, oh God, where do we start? <laughs> <clears throat> I am presuming it was as interesting for you as I thought it would be. So, I'm start sure. from where you think this. Sure, kept us Tell me everything you know. Hmm. Fascinating. Sorry, I missed what Wiss said because you guys talked over each other a little bit. <laughs> Chip says, it sure kept us occupied for a while. <laughs> Uh, I'm Love just it. trying to. I'm just trying to think. Like, where's the best place to start? Like, oh, okay, yeah. Th this is probably uh, where Crystal would start. Um, yeah, it, unless like one of you guys has something to add. No, no, go all the way. Well, I suppose for starters. We found the base of the, um, sorry, I need to figure out how to work, work this, uh, sorry, word this, um, um, for starters, we found the base of the, um, the mixed tune and real kind blood that we keep finding. Mm-hmm. 
How much do you know about the Will of Inspiration? A decent amount. So I've acquired a taste for it in the past. The knowledge that is. <laughs> okay, Lynn, Crystal is sending you a look right now <laughs> that says she does not believe you when you, she's, when you say that and for knowledge about it. Like, she is taking that literally right now. <laughs> Lynn just stares back. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn just stares back in the you gonna call me out on my bluff here or not? Like, go work to do. No. She, she, not this time. What, maybe one day right now she's got too much to deal with. <laughs> A wise woman. <laughs> um... Uh, so yeah, I think she's just going to continue the, well, um, based on our findings, uh, it's very probable that water from the Well of Inspiration is being used as the base of um, whatever method is being used to combine and create these um, mixtures of um, tune and real kind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, makes sense, especially with the university's ties being able to supply that sort of thing for these people. All right, all right. I'm not really sure that it's the university behind this detective. No, it's... University in part used to get the resource in the first place. Entirely different being actually running the boat. We found some evidence that this has actually been happening outside of Anquil as well. Well, pick. All right. Deal me in. I suppose here comes the most difficult part, and I'm still... I still don't quite know the best way to articulate this and how much to say. You remember we mentioned that there was a a child involved in, in this, potentially peripherally. The child's more connected than you thought. Yeah, yes. Well away from the peripheries at this point. All right, I've got a few deductions on that. Some are slightly more palatable than others. We've spoken to them at length regarding a lot of this. And there's not really a good way to dance around it. What do you think? And Chifley just sort of looks at Crystal and he's like, I know you kind of set up that you weren't going to name names, but if we can't tell Lynn, <laughs> who can we tell? That's his expression right now. Yeah, oh. yeah. I think Crystal's going to take matters a little bit more like, um, like, I think basically putting the option in Lynn's hands, like, um, kind of thing. So I think she's just sort of going to straighten and... Given the sensitive nature of this, I'd thought that it was perhaps best to keep the number of people who knew about this child, the identity of this child, to a minimum. And a part of me still thinks that should be the case, given the nature of this case. But given the fact that they are much more involved than we thought, we think that perhaps there might be benefit in you knowing who it is as well. And there is kind of a, a bit of an underlying implication of 
is this something that you want to know? Do you think that it will be more valuable to for you to know it because you have resources that we don't? Or is this a case of um, don't like still like the less people know, the, the less likely that information can get out and I can work with uh, the information that I have kind of thing. There's that like, I, I don't know I am giving you that um, mm -hmm. as as someone who is more experienced in this field, I'm giving you that um, that mm -hmm. right. She the best way to describe it is she went quiet as you guys were talking, and you saw Detective Stagehand, the detective, coming out. And as you've been saying, her head is just tilted ever so slightly to one side, and it is a very sharp gaze she's giving you, is perhaps one word, as you've been saying this and laying it out. And then she does just go... I... have dealt with many different cases of all sorts. If this child needs protection... I should be able to provide at least part. And other matters. I think it would be wise for me to know. Especially as I've got a few potential deductions. Come. Give me their name. It's complicated. Because it's not just one. But at a glance it would look like it. Oh... There is Mad Lad, but sometimes he changes to Alexander, also, completely Alexander. different form. It's not shape-shifting as such, it's, how to put it, Mad Lad is a tune. Alexander is not but they share a body and their appearance and physical qualities changes depending on who is in control. Transitioning being. And the person that you got this sample that you sent from. has a genetic familial marker with Mad Lad and Alexander in their DNA. A parental genetic marker. Well, well, the plot thickens. That is fascinating. Two souls, one body, the transitions, especially with the father's condition as it is. Well, we wish we knew more about the partners. Unfortunately, they're out of the picture. That is... That is fascinating. Have we got a name for the father? Yes. Um, one... Nathan Summers. At least that is no. our best guess. Oh, that is very intriguing to me. Hmm. They and Alexander are from a... What would you call it? Crystal and Order. A mm. group. Order might be the best word. Order is order perhaps of, the best word. An order of blood hunters. I see. And from head Alexander of told the us, seems to be head of the organization. His parents were. How much does Mad Lad or Alexander, either of them, know about their parental activities? Uh, before we carry on any further, 
The child. Are they living with Nathan Summers, do we know? No. No. Good. Good. That at least eases one part. I think I've had the name Madlad before. You probably would not find it difficult to track him down. He goes to the same school as Missy and is her best friend. And he just sort of pinches the bridge of his nose as like a <laughs> fucking course. <laughs> I just I also just rolled a history for Lynn and I'm so glad she rolled high. She just kind of <laughs> stares stares into the middle distance and goes He's one of the ones <laughs> We never tracked him down from the baby fighting ring. <laughs> Chifley's gone from pinching, pinching the bridge of his nose to just complete head in hands. And it's like, yeah. I don't remember Missy saying that he was there, but it doesn't even remotely surprise me. <sighs> Sam Jack, help me. Nope. All right, so we got Nathan Summers, we got the parental link, we got that. The the other parents are, well, we know, we at least know that Nathan Summers, a.k.a. there's another name I know them by, whole thing, uh, James. James believes their partners to be dead. We have every reason to believe that is true until proven otherwise. Hmm. Might be fun to chase that down at some stage. Yeah, each their own. There's more. Yes. There always is. Mad Lad also has a different family, um, adopted family of pirates who at this stage are also presumed dead. Um, how it's in an incident that sent him to Inkwell. However, he has a bandana that allows that family to track him. It's not incorporated into his design either. I gave Matt that a full color swatch and I couldn't draw color off of it. So he wears it all the time. I don't think I've ever seen him without it. But it hasn't incorporated into his design. It's kept separate. Hmm. We do not know the link between his adopted family and Alexander's parents. But it... Mm, there is speculation on how they might be involved, considering that uh, what we learned from Alexander. It wasn't wasn't a happy story. I see. Mm-mm. Would you wish for this bandana to be removed from the child? I think you would have a difficult time doing it, even if you wanted to. Oh, don't threaten me with a good time. It's... I, I could possibly figure out a way. I know certain people. I've got someone who's very persuasive. It's got a lot of sentimental value to him. His pirate family were very dear to him. Okay. If you don't think it's wise for it to be removed, I will not push. The whole thing is difficult. From what Alexander told us. The way that they as a collective came to exist was, well, frankly, it was traumatic. But Alexander is older than Mad Lad. So, was Mad Lad born during this time of trauma? Created? Formed? 
That seems to be the case. What he said he remembered was going into the blood hunter training area and not being able to defend himself from the beasts they were training with. I think they said it was displacers. Yes, that's correct. I'm yeah. sorry, how old how old was this child? Um There's a pause. How old was he? <laughs> yeah, I I'm I like I wanna <laughs> say like six, but I'm I'm Oh eight. Like, thank thank eight. you, Nona. Thank you, Nona. <laughs> eight. Um eight years old. I was younger than I was when I... Okay. The way they explained it was they died, understandably, an eight-year-old against a displacer beast. And then they were brought back. And he does the quotes with his fingers. Some sort of experimentation by the parents. not quite fully able to perceive things around them but aware for a while at least and until there was some sort of attack um, an altercation of some variety and then the next thing they were able to give us was Mad Lad's first conscious um, memory with being on the ship with the family that adopted him. Okay. Well, when you said it was a bad circumstance... Okay. All right. This place is safe. And hmm. from from there, Mad Lad, with Alexander sort of in the back seat. I don't think he told us how long it was he spent on the ship, but a significant amount of time. And then, attack on the pirate ship. When they shoved him through a portal to Anquil, and that was the last he saw of them. Hmm. Fascinating. Detective, if you want my opinion, there are mul there are multiple potential parties, both alive and presumed dead, that would have an interest in Mad Lad and Alexander. Uh, from a personal and parental side to a more experimental academic interest, since Madled's blood sample was by far the closest that we've seen out of the lot to have been perfect to whatever it is that they are trying to achieve. Indeed. That does put a great deal of risk on their heads. His heads. Okay. I can muddy some waters on some fronts, throw up some false trails for if anyone does go digging, and put some pings in place on that so if anyone does try. I, I know a few ways to do that, ways to do it for different reasons. You wouldn't happen to have any samples on hand, would you? We didn't use all of the blood samples, so I <laughs> assume that Crystal still has them in Hammer Space somewhere. Yes, she does. Um, <laughs> she is giving Lynn another look. Like, uh, she's not sure if she wants to answer that, but she is eventually going to say yes. May I have one? It's useful for different purposes of my own my own research and such. Will be kept within network as, as always. Hmm. 
While I see the benefit, uh, I'm going to be frank, Detective. I'm not sure I trust you with blood samples now. <laughs> After all we've been through, Dr. Everlight. Hence why I'm being honest with you. I... It's appreciated. I will press. It might be useful for several reasons. If you truly don't think it a good idea, then... Eh, I can't exactly stop you. I'm not exactly going to force it out of your hands. But at the same time, it might be of use to me. Huh. All right. I think I can. I think I can divvy up what I have, uh, in order to make sure that there is enough for, uh, both of us. I don't think that. I can't think of anything right now that I would need to test further. But I like having backup on hand just in case. Of course. Don't we all? Having the contingencies. Was there a particular blood sample that you wanted? Yeah. Honestly, it's rather fascinating that there are two. I mean, both... Um, I wonder how they interact when mixed. Would, would they just divide again, like oil and water? What are the different properties? The chromatography must be fascinating. And she just kind of stops talking to you guys and just starts writing. <laughs> Chief will just sort of lean forward a little bit. Are you talking about Mad Lad and Alexander? Aye. It's, I've already got um, for, well, Nathan Summers' identity during transition. You, you already know about that. I gave you blood. Yeah. See? Uh, it's a I give you blood, you give me blood. See? <laughs> well, I don't know how useful it, this information is for you, Detective, but in terms of the two boys, Mad Lad, from top to bottom, is, for all intents and purposes, a tune. I was able to swatch every one of his colors. Alexander, on the other hand, there is only one aspect of him that I could swatch. Mm -hmm. There is a thing that he does when using his blood hunter abilities. Mm -hmm. And it has a visual effect to it. I could swatch that. And when we were looking at this blood sample that you provided... It took some effort and the lab level equipment that we thankfully had access to, but I was able to swatch that too. However, the swatch was unstable and was changing color on the swatch paper. Oh, fascinating. It was not the word I would use. Chromatographic slip is always fascinating, how it works, how it functions. It's the instability, that's intriguing. Whatever process they've used to do this, though, I don't think it's contagious in any way. Mm. It's not I stable, however. No. I oh, have a small absolutely. sample of my own ink and combined it with a small part of that sample, and they stayed separate. So it's not something that can take over other samples. They have to be forcibly put together. So Once they are a... put together, however, they do not like to be separated. No. I, as is the way with such things, when... <laughs> Let's not dwell on that. <clears throat> but yes, no. I'd love certain characteristics of the blood sample I gave you. The, well, the cell slowly turning from tune, half tune. The lycanthropy is fascinating in this degree. But also the blood in its own right. There was some disturbing elements to it, I got to admit. 
Jim's going to frown a little bit and lean back and go, Lycanthropy is contagious, however. Aye. Some... Some lichens can... Lichen-like beings can tailor it a little. But you don't need to dwell on that. Cursing, however, it's interesting how selective it is. I wonder what remove curse would do. Let me look at my sheet. Does Chif know that spell? I I know, I know, uh, I know that Crystal knows remove curse. Um, <laughs> I think she's gonna tilt her head to the side and. I had not tried that actually. Um. One moment. And I'm going to roll hammer space because she has a few things to divvy up. Jeff doesn't mm-hmm. have it. That's a bummer. Oh, great. I rolled, an, I rolled a, a one. Fumble Woo! time. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> okay. Well, she rolls and um, goes into her hammer space, her bag, and uh, instead of pulling out... Um, Instead of pulling it out, she pulls out a badge with wings that says Rescue Ranger made of stained glass. Um. Aww. <laughs> Adorable. Uh, which, yeah, um, a bit of surprise at that. Uh, quickly shoves it back in. Alright, let's go again. Yes. It would have been shiny potential. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nope, that was, yep, going back in straight away. <laughs> Um, all right, and that's enough. Yep, that's enough. Uh, okay, so she pulls out. Um, she actually pulls out like a like full like kit, like you know that you can like put the blood samples in, uh, and mm-hmm. unlocks that. And um, she's going to pull out three different ones. Um, one of them, uh, I think she's going to like talk as she's going in. Um, these two are for you. Uh, this one is uh, an echo sample sample from the uh, goo that came from the necklace that got broken during your altercation with the dragon, I believe, if I rem- rem- remember incorrectly. Mm. This is the first uh, blood sample combination that we got. This one is Mad Lads and Alexander's. They only have the one. Um, it seemed that um, the they shared um, the blood uh, between shifting forms. And this one is the one that I am going to try remove curse on. Make sure to halve it first, just in case. We don't want to destroy the sample. Right, good idea. <laughs> She's gonna pull out another, another uh sample. She's gonna pass the other two off to um, like like you know, sort of make sure that they're like halved, and then hand them over to uh V Wild. Uh, so not V Wild. Sorry. <laughs> wow, V Wild was here as well. <laughs> I'm in the walls. <laughs> hand them over to Lynn. Put the others back. You know, secure the case. So, um, like, secure everything back away in her hammer space so that there is no way of um contaminating um anything else. Also, she had a fair few blood samples in that. <laughs> in yeah. That thing. Okay. Okay. Because Chifley or Wiss's characters haven't been here when Lynn has been around life essence. Can you roll me an insight, please? Oh, good. Good, sure. Chifley, the one time you're rolling the thing you're good at, and you roll like shit. <sighs> it's a waste. What's of um? What's Crystal's passive insight again? Oh, it's not great. <laughs> then again, I feel like she was maybe uh, keeping an eye on Lynn this time because yeah, she's you can roll as well if you like. Thank you, because yeah, no, she's keeping an eye on Lynn. She is. Oh, actually, I'm wondering whether she would have like stopped before pulling it out and like sort of given like Lynn a look like you like I'm trusting you with this, but I am I will use like greater me- uh, measures if this goes wrong, kind of thing. <laughs> <coughs> I am going Same. to also roll a hammer space for Chifley. Um, 
Oh god, that's not a good roll, Crystal. Okay, that's a three. That's fine. Um, Chief is going to bring out his own wand, just in case. <laughs> just, he's just going to stand there with it, holding it loosely in one hand, going, okay, mm -hmm. I am now prepared in case some shit hits the fan. <laughs> Okay, so Chifley got a 14. Crystal, yeah. what did you get? Oh, I, sorry, I put in the wrong one. My bad. <laughs> um, I got an 11. Okay. Crystal, you're looking, but... She seems to be focusing on it, but, but seeing you, it's... Yeah, she looks away. Chifley, you do note that she is still looking at the samples, but you can't glean the emotion behind it all. It just looks professional, even if it is a bit prolonged, especially at seeing more vials within the main box. <laughs> oh, golly. Goodness, goodness, golly gosh. I think he's just sort of going to... he He's sort of... Because I imagine that they're sitting, like, on the other side of Lynn's desk. He's going to sort of slide his chair backwards a little bit so that he can lean one hand on the, the desk surface. And he's just going to tap tap his wand. Because it's it's only, like... Um, it's the about 30 centimetres long at the minute. Um, and he just sort of gives it a little bit of a tap, tap against the um, the desktop. Like, he's not casting anything, but he is doing a de very deliberate, I know what you're doing. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give you this here and now, Chifley. You just get an ear twitch. You know when you have tigers in the zoo and they're focusing on one thing and then something else happens, like someone knocks on the glass and like, yeah, I know you're there. <laughs> All right, good. We're both aware <laughs> of each other. Okay. <laughs> She does not stop looking at these samples. And then the moment they are, like, within her range, it's just lean across the table and hers. Yeah, yeah. Crystal would have been doing this as quickly as she could because she's like, yep, yeah, nope, not having these out in the open any longer than I need to. Oh, my God. Oh, my so, God, Lynn. I'll be chasing you up on a few of those other ones. I'm sure they've got some interesting stories to them. But I get patient confidentiality and such. I abide by it myself. Quite. Yeah, that's a very grim smile that Crystal is giving you. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> it is a smidge colder in the room. <laughs> Chip is made very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll play nice, I'll play nice. Anyway, let's get that sorted, and then after that... I want to find out if there were any other aspects of Nathan Summer's uh, blood that you found interesting. Yeah, so um, we're giving this a try with the remove curse on, on the uh, blood sample that's remaining out. That we are. I would also like you to know that Lynn has taken the samples, put them away, and he's kind of getting behind a barrier on the desk. <laughs> Very Encouraging. <laughs> now um, he's casting bark skin. I think um, Chief will actually tap his wand against his chin thoughtfully for a second. Uh, could we try something else first? I just had a thought. What did you have in mind? Well, I know a spell. Detect evil and good. Oh. We. It doesn't affect the sample any. So if I cast this in the first instance, we might get a little bit more insight into it before we potentially destroy it. Indeed. Uh, Crystal, did you ever cast Identify on it? Did she cast Identify? I don't remember. I feel like she did. I, she, she did. I'm pretty sure she did. Mm hmm, mm hmm. This is just Lynn covering her bases on the... She was not there. She don't know. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Actually, yeah, I think that uh, Crystal would have also passed across like their findings, like a- an actual like full like document of the scientific mumbo jumbo findings from the uh, the okay. tests that they did. Oh yes, hey, you give that you give that to her. She is basically devouring this thing. <laughs> <laughs> they caught up for coffee later and wrote the report. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dear. It, <clears throat> it is. Just scary the sheer intensity that Lynn takes to this report. She is writing with both hands. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, let me just I'm going to do a few things. First of can, all, it's going to be a that, okay. Can yeah, you sorry, uh, what was that, post the the spell in the chat? I, I would like I to I absolutely see it. can. Thank yep. you. I I am what is your deception modifier, Chiff? Okay, it's not great. I'm pretty sure Lynn, at the very least, can beat that. Um, all right, that's a deception. That is a, a no. I didn't type a four. I did did not type a four. It is a fourteen, not a sixteen. For fuck's sake. Cool. Uh, she beats that <clears throat> on the dice alone. Okay. Cool. Um, <laughs> I will give you that in DMs. Actually, what you hear him say. Um, but he, he, cause the detect evil and good has, um, verbal components, but he is deliberately going out of his way. Oh my God. Headphones, please work. There, there we go. Uh, deliberately going out of his way to say the verbal component, like the verbal part of it as quietly as physically possible. And like, he's already pretty damn soft spoken. So, um, this is but- a passive, uh, passive perception. Uh, or you can actively try and listen to what he's saying. Oh, because if, if um, it, perception—it was even higher than that. Because Crystal actually has a plus six to her perception now. Yeah, I'm just saying here and now. I thought you said insight, and so if it's perception, Lynn got <laughs> a. Let's see. Let's just do that. Uh, twenty-eight. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, that's fine. So, um, yeah, but he he is speaking something as. Like, there is almost no verbalness to this. It's very, very soft. Um, but he, he says what he has to in order to cast the spell. This is the text for Detect Evil and Good. And then I'm Bye. going to look at the gallery pointedly and uh, see if Nona can tell me what, what Chiff will see <laughs> in a sec. Cool. Um, I am also going to need to check something because I have stuff to give you too. <laughs> oh joy, oh joy, oh marvelous joy. Because <laughs> that's what I was checking is it, it is just a like a general perception. It's not on like it will catch anything in the room, so Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Fun wait, times, fun times. Wait, so this spell, the detect evil and good. Mm-hmm. That's specifically on the item or the room? It's within 30 within feet. 30 feet. <laughs> oh, cool. Can you roll me a perception, Wiz? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can. Uh, okay, that one is the plus four. All right, all right. Um... Oh my god, my headphones. So, good news on the front of this is not going to blind Chifley like certain other spells when you do stuff in a sentient house. Because <laughs> I do always find that music when people go, I'm going to cast Detect Magic! Good job, you blinded yourself. <laughs> Yes, um, very much so. But that's that's not what yeah, <laughs> not the vibe. Yeah, it's. I'm gonna I'm gonna roll something on my end to see whether it will be detectable at this time. All right, I can give you. Um, I don't think that's quite enough to give you a uh, like everything. Uh, but for one, Crystal is reading as Faye, which is probably unsurprising. Yep. But there is this weird like double ping that you're getting from her 
and you but you can't see anything else like it's like there's a second fae kind of thing on her oh trippy I would also like to say that while you cannot identify what it is because it's like a distorted ping you do just get a single one from the monkey Mm mm-hmm all right all right um He's going to sort of glance at Crystal, glance at Lynn, kind of looks down at his chest a bit, and then he's going to look back at the sample. Oh, uh, yeah. All three of them are, are so oh, yeah. fine. <laughs> magically consecrated as well. God, I think actually Network is pinging because that place has been blessed to kingdom fucking come. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This place yes. is warm as fuck. <laughs> That's what happens when a god breaks your desk. <laughs> yeah. It is what happens when a god breaks your desk. Fucking hell. She, she threw a haymaker. It was fine. All right. All right. Let me let me read out loud for the recording what Nona's put in the chat for us. Uh, okay. You cast detect evil and good and look at the sample and you don't detect a major presence of any of those types it can detect. The only slight thing you kind of get is godly presence, not quite exactly celestial, but you think this has to do with the well of inspiration that was used to create this kind of blood. Okay. Okay. Chip will... Be ponderous. He's still giving like the two of you a little bit of a side eye, but then he sort of um, taps his wand against the other palm a little bit and just goes, "Well, it's not distinctly any of the things that my spell can detect. There is not quite exact ping from it in the." celestial sense but something divine potentially from the well of inspiration influence that we already knew was there it makes sense I mean with it being the base yes Yes. and the well of inspiration is known to have um, connections to well deities it is in part kind of one Mm. I mean there are clerics of it I do believe at least there might be. I know there are of other pillars. Well, pillars, not the well itself, etc., etc. Fascinating area of study. Quite. Well, but it was informative nonetheless. And he kind of glances the- between the two of you and they, you may go ahead with your remove curse now. I don't think I've got anything else we could try. I, I let's just, you know, hope it doesn't implode. Right. I have shield at the ready for myself. Do you guys want to take any precautions before I do this? Cheerfully is just going to stand up and he's going to round the desk and stand behind Lynn. (laughs) Because he's got nothing. (laughs) No, network's not that mean. (laughs) Lynn just kind of does another ear twitch sort of thing and then just waves a hand in the by all means go ahead sort of thing. Alright, yep, then Crystal's sort of like, sort of that like pose of the, she can leap away uh, if things go wrong kind of thing, but she does need to touch the sample in order to cast Remove Curse. curse. This is why we wear gloves. <laughs> <laughs> also roll in a kana. Cool. You are getting a what is Lynn's Bardic Inspiration die. If you don't use it now, by all means, it can be used in the future. But let me just grab it. Let me just grab it. Da, 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 right, da, yeah. I missed that Arcana instruction from uh, from D6. Nona. D6? Awesome. Yeah. I am going to add that on just for extra uh, because I want to. Nice. All right, cool. Why is Before we carry on, so Chif- bad, Chifley. Far out. Before we carry on further, hey, Chifley, do you want a D6 from Network? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Goodness only knows what he's going to use it for, but I would appreciate a D6 because he's so squeezy. You are cold. You are cold, and Network provides. <laughs> <laughs> you will be force-fed soup later. 
I maybe didn't need to use it on the Arcana roll, um, but I did anyway because I want to know things. <laughs> Who is funny as shit? This is why we do it. This is why I give it to you guys. I mean, yeah, yeah, we can try that. Add that. Mm-hmm. That's a two. That makes it an eighteen. Mm-hmm. If I use yep. it on the Arcana, which I have now done. I really need to up his arcana somehow. You Take a level cannot and be a sor- you cannot be a sorcerer with shit arcana. Yes, you can. Watch. I mean, he is a sorcerer with shit arcana. I mean, <laughs> valid. Listen, listen. All Chifley know is be cold, titty window, and be shit arcana. <laughs> <laughs> God. He knows a little bit more than that. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, golly. Okay, the moment you cast remove curse on this blood sample and it does not budge like you suspected in the previous FPS, it is a much stronger curse than normal. However, with that arcana check for both of us, you can for sure tell that Nathan slash James is not a natural born lycanthrope. So, what can you give me? That didn't work. Nothing encouraging. It's stronger than Remove Curse can fix. Well, it didn't destroy the sample. That's that's honestly quite good. Well, a shame in some cases. That would have been fun. But, alas. Hmm. So it's a forced influence. Yes, definitely. Um... Whoever, Nathan, James, whoever we want to call this person, they're not a natural born lycanthrope. Hmm. So, with whatever effects were related to Alexander's situation, I mean, they're both... The lycanthropy is too in design. It's too niche. The, slow, the cells slowly turn from tune to more half tune when separated. There's other parts of it, other aspects, but this forcing, so it's within Iron Quill that it occurred potentially. I mean, it's got tune links, perhaps it's related to what's underneath University City. Hmm. There are two possibilities that I can see. Hmm? Yeah. Either Nathan James was already working on this kind of thing with his partners or with someone else, potentially, and wasn't having a lot of success on himself. And so when Alexander was incapacitated and Use the cover of bringing him back as a method of testing it. Hmm. We know now. Oh, you you continue. I will ask after that. Sure. Um, or it was entirely genuine, and they, as a collective, tested it on Nathan before they fine tuned it for Alexander. Hmm. Uh, In any case, I think he went first, because it's not perfect. Or, when they lost Alexander, they tried it again on him, but the circumstances were not right. Not the same. Hmm. Okay, now I'm Mm -hmm. done. I'm done now. (laughs) Uh, Winona, I wanted to ask, because it's been a while since that FPS, but I believe that I ruled a history check uh, during the game with where Chifley and Crystal found all this information out on the names of 
um, Alexander's parents, and they and they did ping for something in uh, like something she'd read about before. Correct. I just, I just, I might be wrong, but I just have this feeling, and I feel like it would be relevant right now. <laughs> mm hmm. Me consulting all my different notes. Me writing notes. Yeah. All right. Well, um, and they and they studied it, um, and they were studying it in Inkwell. Um, that's where she found it. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. No, no wonder she knows where it is because that's where she grew up. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Happy wonderful times. Uh, yeah, no, Crystal's going to sort of, like, um, sort of going to stiffen and, and mention, I believe that there's a good chance that they were studying this before, uh, what happened, since I do, uh, I've come across the names of his parents before in a study that was looking at the differences between Toon Blood Hunters and real kind blood hunters. So you have more names. The names of the other parents I have I it was a very long time ago. I could maybe track down the book the that study means I will see what I can do. Okay, can fantastic. It's I'll send some resources your way to aid in your studies. But I would like those. I would like that very much. I will okay. do my best. But the names were um and Edgar Helmont Belsing and Marie Della Belsing. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Well, I'll do some of my own digging on that front. I know how to quietly do so. I think that might be rather fun. Good things to dig up. All right. You and I have very different definitions of fun. <laughs> Hunting for information. You do your research, I do mine. I suppose. I just generally like doing them in less dire situations. <sighs> when you've been through so many dire circumstances, you learn to take the thrill in the moment. Alright. Okay, okay. Uh, what did you find about the cells of Nathan himself, by the way? They were not stable. Did Aye. Disappearing and reappearing, fading out of existence. It's stable, but at the same time unstable. And seeing as it's something that's been forced, or at least forcibly bound, there is a being out there keeping them this way as much as possible. Oh, I want to know who's bringing the hound to heal. I'm worried about the health of this person. There's no telling how this will, how this condition will change, potentially worsen with time. They could potentially be on a ticking time clock. Then we do everything we can to keep other people safe on this matter. It's... That one, that one has a very intriguing mentality. It's, 
Your letter to me suggested that one of your informants had a run-in with them. I... Uh, I think... You've met them, Mr. Fort... Uh, Mira. Mira had an interaction with them. It was a... Interesting affair. We got a little bit of information out. Not as much as perhaps we would have wanted, but still other factors. We learned about the partners, for example. And the wolves. Wolves built from scratch, which I'm chasing down at the moment. <laughs> I'm rather looking forward to getting to sink my teeth into that. God, Crystal, don't hand me that. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Oh, God, I think she would say that, um, figuratively or literally. Best not ask questions we don't want the answers to, but I, I, admit, I do actually want to... I've got, I've got some links to that one. And I've got... I'm going to peel one. I, 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 I've got a link in there, and I'm, I'm going to peel one. I want to, well, find some enlightening information within it once I've removed the skin and also soft hack it. <laughs> it's going to be intriguing. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm distracted by the gallery right now. <laughs> As am I. <laughs> um, yeah, Crystal's just sort of like... Um, like, not even, like, really blinking at what what Lynn's saying, like, <laughs> maybe she should be more concerned about this, but, like, she does not hang out with normal people. No, she doesn't. God bless her. But Lynn does just comment of just, like, I've, I've got a specific location in mind for where they are. Uh, killing of livestock, metal wolves, etc, etc. So I'm, I'm tracking that one down. Might end up having a bigger interaction in that one. We'll see about it. At the same time... Oh, I want one of those. Well, if we come across any, we'll be sure to send it your way, Detective. Brilliant. I'll look forward to it. Just, I know you're more than capable of taking care of yourself, but do also take care, detective. Hey, I do my best on it. I've put in precautions in certain places on that sort of stuff. Uh, and I'm doing my best with this case in general. I mean, I got in contact with someone who could provide me with certain information, extra insights, influences and such. There is something going on in that sewer. I didn't go down there, obviously. It's, I might find it fascinating. At the same time, I'm not going to go in down there without a party. That would be fake and stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I... I couldn't help myself. That's it's excellent. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm calling you fucking out. You know who you are. <laughs> it's so in character, but it's going to be so funny when the party finds out what happened. Exactly. That's part of why I do it. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Okay, other than that, honestly, I just want to get a hold of Nathan James. Well, James was a pseudonym when he was stalking me, so we're going to put that out on a limb of that pseudonym or a false name. Nathan Summers, that's, that's more likely. At the same time, yeah, fascinating on multiple fronts. Maybe maybe can be useful. Might be fun to get under the skin, especially as we have other names. Another time. But getting that one eventually, that will be fun. Find out certain parts, medically speaking, and design and form speaking. But other times, other places... Not, not to curb your enthusiasm, detective. Aye. 
but while I am not, I wouldn't say that I am fond of Mad Lad, necessarily. Mm -hmm. But he is very dear to Missy. So while I can understand getting carried away with research and enthusiasm, if he is put in harm's way, I would like to say that she'll just be upset. But I know my sister well enough. She will stick her nose into anything that he is involved in, if given half the chance. And these are children. So yeah. I think you can appreciate that we have to be delicate. We have not told him what we found with this most recent blood sample. We did get their permission to share what we found when we talked to him. Talk to them with this group of people, even if I made sure to leave a lot of the information out. But I... I worry what he might do if given this information. How old is he again? Currently. Uh, oh. Uh, about me, asking, me asking these things. Nine. Yeah, no. This information will not reach them by my hand. And at the end of the day, one of my greatest duties is protecting children. They are the future, and they are our greatest treasure in some ways. I'd agree with that. I will play no intentional part in causing any harm for these children, and do my best to mitigate unintentional or accidental. It's... They might still get brought in, but we can put in safeguards in place. It's... Protagonism is a very dicey subject. And both Mad Lad and Missy are the kind of children who will go looking for anything. Well, then we just have to be the front line as best we can. You give a firm nod in agreement. Is there anything else you wish to bring into the topics here? We've got comparison of information. We've got further information on the samples themselves. <sighs> Again, shame about the remove curse, but hey ho, we can't all have nice things. It's... In my experience, it's never that simple. Not with cases I... like this. I oh, I drink to that. Still. So, Again, didn't burn the sample, because that hurts, let me tell you. All right. Da, 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 da. Yeah, Crystal yeah. is actually like putting it back in her hammer space now, since it's fine. Lynn watches it go just for a second. Just off. Okay, okay so... The colour scheme's been fascinating, it's... Well, whatever we're looking for, we're going to find it down that sewer. It's how this plot is culminating that's interesting to me. In all honesty, it's... What's the end plan? How does this all relate? Whatever it is. <laughs> I don't have a good feeling about it. There is something about what they are trying to do that does not sit right with me. The fascination with the tune aspect in particular, there are other methods of 
revival and those in and of themselves can be dangerous I mm -hmm. I don't like this I don't like what this implies indeed okay we pick up the plot beats as they come along we work with it well of inspiration they've probably already got a decent cash but I can work to mitigate certain things I have certain political sway yeah that guy's an asshole enough that they can potentially yeah I'll see what I can do on that front we also know I know that an ancient artifact was stolen from a tribe at one point that had a connection to their god. So I wonder if that's got any relation. It's partially related on, into the case as a whole, but divinity, connection... Given, I wonder if it would... given mm -hmm. everything else that's been peripherally connected to this case which has ended up not being so peripherally connected I would hazard a guess that it is Aye. mental connections or such we'll give it a few more looks on things pin a few more things to the board although I'm reluctant to put everything on boards nowadays I have a few hunches about other things that we might be watching eh, other dynamics, other situations other scenarios, other plot lines God, the plot lines, they don't stop coming and they don't stop coming. Sometimes I do wonder why I quit coffee. Okay. All right. So we've got Mad Lad Origin. Bandana. Da, 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 da. Nathan, the pick. Transitioning souls. We just, I'd highly advise we keep the Mad Lad Alexander fusion far away from all of this. Perhaps... Berry. Wonder if we could put them on a beach episode. Not the time. But we can come up with certain scenarios on that front to try and mitigate things as much as possible. Keeping the kid out of it as much as possible to stop the direction of plot, but we'll see how things go. I'd love to meet more of the group that's involved in this at some stage. I know TOC. Wonderful chicken. Wonderful chicken. Got to shovel talk them. That was great. Crystal's eyebrows raise at that. Because she lives with TOC and Juniper. It's just like, wait, you shovel talked TOC? Yeah. How did that go? It went peck and fantastic. I got to show TOC a hole. I dug it. It was great. I like them. I like TLC. TLC is big and fantastic. Also liked by someone else I know. Well, and of course the puppy. <laughs> Love the puppy. Juniper's the best. Anyway. Yes. They're both very before... good people. I, you have a lot of good connections. Big and fantastic to see. Lean on them. <laughs> Honestly, I just wish they would get into trouble less. I ain't not the bitch in this Anquel intrigue, but that is our life, that is our lot. We don't pick the ballroom, we just dance. Alright, is there anything else we wanted to cover? Mr. Ford? Wiss? We did. We did. Well, while while we're waiting for Wiss, um, I I do have something. Um, Wiss typing. Oh, okay. Mic technical difficulties. Okay. Um, I I have something that'll be fun to add since uh since Lynn was asking uh, like about um other party members. Um, I'm gonna roll a history for Crystal actually because she does know some of the people involved in the case. Yeah, okay, that's definitely good enough. Um, I think Crystal's gonna ask. 
Uh, Detective Lynn, on the topic of getting to know the other party members involved in this case, how well do you know the professor? Hmm. I've heard them referenced. I think someone's been putting out feels trying to get more information on them, but also I know them through TOC. I think they're both in the same club? Hmm. But I've done a little digging. They are, well, not quite sure who they are. Well, I can't help you on that front, but I have met them a few times, and let's just say very good at digging up information for someone who is not a detective, but similarly just as good at getting into trouble. Okay, hunt them for sport and bail them out of trouble. I mean, hopefully... They're doing okay at the moment. Oh, picking, pick. Jinx is just please be somewhere nice, like beach episode or woodland. Chip has nothing to add to this at all. Yeah. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> so many of my other characters know the professor is just not this one. Yeah, not this one. <laughs> Surprise, the one that strolls. <laughs> Okay. We can think of other links on things over time. I've got so many things to write up and link, and we can possibly make some connections within that. And of course, I've got fo- I've got several matters, someone to chase down, and I've got several wolves to peel when I get a hold of them. <sighs> Anything else you guys want to do? No, I don't have anything else. All right. Not at this stage. Just, I guess, keep us in the loop. Um, if you do I... manage to detain uh, Nathan, um, a medical checkover might not be the worst idea. I, I'll make sure to do that. It's... I have so much I want to do on that front. But yes, yes, so make sure you're informed on that front. Uh, if you see Chief Luma in between, tell him he's a son of a pick. You know, yes, I, I know do you have no such thing. Oh, go on. Listen, just say it was me who told you to. Go on, look at this face. I'm doing so much for you. I'm being so nice. Fine. I doubt that I will see them before you, but if I do, I will pass on the message. Good. You can do it at the same time as me as well. It is of no consequence to me. (laughs) Oh, God. Chiefly's just shaking his head. (laughs) Lynn is just... She's looking at you with the most calm expression as she just says this wild-ass shit. I want you to know. (laughs) Okay, okay. Da 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 da. Uh, other than that, the only thing on the agenda is, uh, ah, yes, soup. <laughs> blink, blink, blink. Confusion. <laughs> I'm gonna roll him in history, see if he remembers network. That soup down his face the last time he was here. Oh dear, yes, no, I think he might remember. <laughs> Oh, history. Plus one. Wonderful. That makes it a dirty 20. That is not the right channel to put numbers in. There you go. Uh, he's just got to blink and then put a, a hand on his face. Soup will not help. I'm afraid on this front I must defer to the house rules. And she kind of points at the ceiling and you... <laughs> With your passive perception, even if it is low, you get the feeling that the house is openly staring at you. You are in a sealed room. Uh, I have... Mm, uh, are you going to say that? Okay, yeah. I think Crystal is going to say, Soup sounds lovely. 
I know that I've been feeling a little bit... Uh, sorry, I'm looking for words. Hold on. Um, soup sounds lovely. I know I've been feeling a little bit chillier at the moment, given everything going on, so it might be nice. Oh. All right. Two bowls of the finest soup of the Sage Hands Requiem for two very fine picnics. Come along. Let's work! Soup! Oh, and yeah. As Lynn stands up, there is a little flourish. And every, yeah, no, you guys are getting shuffled casita style. <laughs> <laughs> Chifley will comply, but when he is presented with hot soup, he is going to be casting magic to make it a drinkable temperature for him because hot soup is physically painful. <laughs> <laughs> Network will allow this because Network is just trying to get warmth into you, not burn you. <laughs> uh, yeah, it has to be quite, quite tip. <laughs> at best. I think he's just going to hit Frozen Gauntlet on both hands and hold the bowl until, <laughs> <laughs> until it's cool enough for him to eat. Gosh. There will be that moment of Network just going, what are you doing and casting Prestigitation to heat it up until she realises <laughs> what you're doing. <laughs> it's the battle between them. That's hilarious. <laughs> He calls it down, she warms it up. He calls it down, she warms it up. He's just gonna stop. <laughs> Network will stop eventually, especially when Lynn kindly nudges her into the we are nice to our guests and if our guests need certain things for their ability, we will abide by it. <laughs> we are any ability household. At the same time, yeah. That's <laughs> so cute. I think Crystal is going to be holding her bowl to, like, sort of warm up her hands when she's not eating it. Yeah. Well, it is Lynn. starting to get cold, so... Mm-hmm. Mm. Lynn knows Blended. multiple things. Lynn will be... You know what? Yeah, Lynn is this kind of person. She's got ridiculous sleight of hand. She will be putting in Crystal's pocket a list of all the people that she knows that Crystal is connected to as a just silent reminder, you're not alone. Oh, <laughs> Aww, nice. Good she to know. Knows, she knows what this stuff is like. And she is making sure that Crystal is looked after. Even if she is not there for whatever happens to Crystal, she is putting in precautions. She's trying. That's <laughs> really, that's a good thing. Like, Crystal might ignore it because of, of stuff, but she is definitely not uh, keeping it a secret as well as she would like. Mm hmm. Which, on one <laughs> thing, is a good thing. Yeah. This stuff being with. All right. She's got at least oh, three yeah. people who have been meaning to talk to her about this stuff. The only reason why Lynn doesn't, you know, pull her into the library for a, hey, take a look at my books, okay, let's talk, is she doesn't want that happening within Network. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's please not overblot there. That's so bad. <laughs> that is a bad thing. That is the bad place. Do you have any idea how disgusting that would taste? <laughs> oh dear. Alright, shall we say our farewells? Indeed um, we shall. Yeah, did um did Winona want to do something at the end? Or uh I think given timings, I am going to grab Winona and me and them are going to be doing a thing on another day. Yeah. I'm peel some wolves. Just let I check. Yeah. Kill cool. some wolves. Fucking then in wolves. that case, <laughs> God. Listen, Lynn wants to soft hack their inner circuitry like the Furby. Good grief! Oh my gosh! She's, she's allowed to as a treat. Anyway, the bio. Bye. Bye. <laughs>